Welcome to Neo Royal House of Pricey Cardboard. Today's game is an edited version of Fitz's Dream, the arena of the ancients. I got invited into this amazing pod with Andy from the Guardian Project podcast and Mud from Moderately Anonymous MTG. Honestly, this is a pod I would have scheduled myself if it wasn't already happening. Since it was a live event, I actually have the player's description of their deck, so let's listen to that while checking out our usual Wincon display. This is a, uh, a green-black uh, Planeswalker deck, and it is uh, a, a real... It, it's kind of like the rock in um, modern, just like Boomer John sort of sorcery speed board control. Uh, I've got a Death Cloud and a Gen Wave in here. Those are my two big splashy spells that I would like to cast a really big version of. But it uh, it's pretty slow chugging, but if I can land a bunch of Planeswalkers, I can get a bunch of value and then overrun the creature with boards, literally and figuratively with uh, overrun effects. My goal is to um, counter, um, you know, Genesis waves and death clouds. Um, hey, Andy. So that... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's what the deck was built to do specifically. Um, and then bounce planeswalkers as well. I almost did a spin take. <laughs> <laughs> but the plan here is to animate a bunch of lands into creatures. Um, you know, sometimes I do it on an Ink Moth Nexus and then I win with Infect, and that's really cool. Um, otherwise, you know, the plan is to play a Monastery Mentor and cast a bunch of uh, a bunch of spells, make a bunch of monks with maybe view from above, and uh, overwhelm my opponents in this deck that has five whole creatures. So uh, spell slinging uh, for days. I brewed this to play uh, on the Possibility Storm stream last night, and I'm just playing like a lot of really fucking bad one and two drop creatures you've never really heard of. And then I'm going to try and make Umbris have 25 power and just can one tap people and maybe maybe play some milk cards. We'll see. Thank you to our patrons for supporting this show and make sure to click the little notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Fizz gets to start this off. Uh, oh, anyway, that's me. Hi, my name is uh, Jimmy Wong. I'm from Game Nights. <laughs> um, I heard you're drunk you on uh, have... spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I ate too much spaghetti before this. So, um, yeah, just go check out Game Nights. We did a game with Post Malone recently. There's going to be a <laughs> game with uh, Ronald Reagan's ghost coming soon. Definitely check that out. <laughs> and then drops a swamp. I'll end up a training center and cast Sensei's Divining Top. Mud lends just a nurturing peatland and cast a wild growth on it. And he lends just a plains and enchant it with Equinox. At the end step, Fitz cast a Vampiric Tutor, making sure everyone had a turn one play. Fitz lends just an underground sea. He plays a Sky Diamond and pass. At my upkeep, I spin my top. I then lends just a Myriad Landscape as land for turn and pass. Mud cast an Arcane Signet and pass. Andy then drops a Glacial Fortress. He then cast a Mana Vault, ending turn two. So I'm really good at magic. After I shuffled, I was able to draw a Swamp. <laughs> God damn it. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Fitz cast an Arcane Signet. He follows it up with a Whifferer's Bubble. I then drop a Battlefield Forge and cast a Cultivator's Caravan. Mud sadly does not draw a land again. He, however, cast a Sword Feast and Famine. Um, I'm gonna play an Ink Moth Nexus. Whoa. Mm. Mm. There it is. <laughs> Can't wait to die to that. Andy cast his commander, Noyandar Royal Shaper. Water, water, everywhere, but not a thing to drink. He cast a Sol Ring and pass. At the end step, Fitz cracks his bubble for a basic. On his turn, Fitz cast Equilibrium. He casts Dark Ritual and uses this mana to cast his commander, Umbris Fear Manifest. On ETB, Umbris exiles cards from Andy's library until he hits a land. He exiles two cards. That's a feel, Andy. Um, good. Really good, because I got to yeah. show off my... I'm going to show off my whole deck tonight, so... It's, it's <laughs> I'm the real winner. At the end step, I spin my top. I then drop an island and cast Dwarven Recruiter. I put on top of my deck Magda Brazen Atla and Stram Senior Edificer. I tap the top to switch it with Magda and cast her. Mud just a War Room. He casts Tusky, Bearer of Secrets. Andy loses one life to Mana Vault. 
He loses no time and casts Coastal Breach. Noyan triggers on cast and animates the Inkmut Nexus. He recasts Soul Ring and Mana Vault before passing. Fifth Lynch of an Island. That equilibrium was gonna wreck me, so I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> let that <happen>. <laughs> <laughs> He recasts the Sky Diamond and the Arcane Signet. To not shuffle away Stram, I land drop Ash Parents. I cast Smothering Tight because I know Fizz is gonna draw some card at some point. I replay the Sensei Divining Top and pass. Mud land just an Overground Tomb untapped. He recasts Wild Growth on the War Room this time. He then recasts the Arcane Signet before passing. On his turn, Andy activates his Nexus, turning it into a 4 4 Infect Flyer. Going to combat, he sends the land to Fitz. Fitz has a reaction and casts Risk Hold. And he reacts with Arcane Denial, countering the removal. Well, Andy, you got your wish. That was very nice. You're like, I wish I was drawing cards. Exactly. Fitz well, is like, was... here's one. Ooh, I was holding you. this up to get rid of something that Fitz was going to play, I assume. Um, but <laughs> I need to keep my stupid Ink Moth Nexus around, so... At Fitz's upkeep, Arcan Denial makes them draw additional cards, which turns into additional treasures for me. Fitz recasts his commander, and on ETB, Mud exiles his top card, an undergrowth stadium. From the from the moment I played Smothering Tide, every time something has happened, I'm like, okay, this is coming my way, and then it goes somewhere else, like, huh. I guess so. <laughs> but don't, hey, I don't want you to feel feel left out, Phil. We'll do you next with a Sagath Mamba. So exile to the den. My train. Oh, that hurts. Mess with the shark. Oh my god. Oh, the manufacturer. Okay, the, that hurt. <laughs> okay. That was uh, six cards. Fitz then casts Wharf Infiltrator, choosing Andy to exile cards. He hits a land right on top. Umbris is now an 11-11. At the end step, I spin my top. We go to my turn and I cast the Omen Kill. I then cast Restoration Specialist, followed by the Cultivator's Caravan. I recast Magda and pass. Mud lends just a Bajika Bug, exiling Fitz's graveyard as it will not pump the Nightmare. He then casts Vivian, Monster's Advocate. He plus one Vivian to create a 3-3 beast with a reach counter. Andy lends just Ardarker Waste. He animates the Ink Moth Nexus and send it to Fitz once more, reaching 8 Infects. In second main, Andy casts Crush of Tentacles. In reaction, I crew Magda into the Omen Kill, creating a treasure. I use two treasures to crack my Myriad landscape and the last treasure to check my top 3 cards with top after I'm done shuffling. Then Andy I'm was done. like, I don't want to get Death Clouded, and he's Death Clouded the table twice so far this game. <laughs> <laughs> Fitz recasts Equilibrium. He then recasts my arch enemy, the Mamba, paying the one to return Ink Mud to him. On my turn, I replay the Caravan and the Tide. I then pass. Mud recasts Wild Growth on the Bajika Bug. He casts Arcane Signet and lands up a Twilight Mire. He recasts Tusky before passing. Andy lands up Razor Tide Bridge. He recasts Soul Ring and Mana Vault. Fitz casts Sword of Heart and Home. He equips the sword on the Mamba. He heads into combat, sending the horror to Andy. Sort of live, laugh, love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Sort of homes and better gardens. Exactly. <laughs> sort of HGTV, better living. With the trigger, Fitz gets an island and pass. I recast the top and spin it. I land drop Sigiri Glacier and recast both Restoration Specialist and Magda, passing. Mud pays for my smothering tight. He replays the Sword and Feast and Famine and equip it to Tusky. He land drops a Woodland Chasm. He goes to combat, sending the Squirrel to Andy. Andy discards Tragic Arrogance while Mud untaps his lens. In second main, Mud recasts Vivian, making a beast with reach once more. Andy land drops Ink Mud Nexus. He recast his commander. No, I'd mm. like to respond <laughs> <clears throat> with uh, Mana Drain. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> four. Oh no, is this a rewind? Four rewind. Oh, oh no. shit. Oh. Rewind, oh, that's the worst one. Untap these four lands. Andy casts View from Above, granting flying to Noyon, but most importantly, animating the Nexus while returning the instant to hand. He then activates the land to become a 1-1 flyer with Infect. 
taking fits out with poison counters. At the end step, I crew my dwarves to create two treasures. Makes a lot Thanks of for having me on your stream, Fitz. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, it'll be, it's the last one. You'll never be invited back. <laughs> yeah. See you Hope never, you Andy. Fun. Still at the end step, I activate Magda to tutor. I get Mirror Entity and then go to my turn. On my turn, I crew my three dwarves to get three treasures. I tutor with Magda once more to get Scourge of Valkes. With the ETB on the stack, I pay two mana into Mirror Entity dealing 5 damage to the Ink Mutt Nexus. After that, I cast Dismantling Wave, destroying Soul Ring and Sword of Feast and Famine. I then pass Mud minus 2 Vivian and cast Kodama of the East Tree. I'm quite afraid of this card, so I counter it with my own Archon Denial. Mud get Grist the Younger Tide with the Vivian effect. E minus 2 Grist to destroy my Scourge of Valkes. For his combat step, Tusky comes my way. In second main, Mudland draws a forest and pass. At Andy's upkeep, Arcan Denial draws me and Mud some cards. Andy casts view from above twice, putting 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the indestructible bridge. He then goes to combat, sending the land of the Merfolk to me. Before blockers, I cast Valakut's Awakening, putting 3 on the bottom and drawing 4. With no new interaction, I take 10. At my upkeep, I spin my top. I then drop a snow covered island and cast Zorn. More treasure. My god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. That's pretty good. Oh no. I cast Confunding Conundrum and follow it up with Dubside Extortionist, creating five treasures. I mutate my commander, Vadrak, a Dex of Thunder. Come on, Vadrak. Let's show them how it's done. Mutating under Duck side, I get to cast Valakut's Awakening for free. I bottom one card and draw two. I cast Quasi Duplicate, getting a Duck side Vedrock Mutant token. It's now time for some damage, so I send Magda and Restoration Specialist to Wendy while Mirror Entity attacks Mud. On attack, I create six treasures, and after blocks, I put nine mana into the Mirror Entity. I then pass. Mud lends us a common tower. He casts Dotty Voidwalker. He then plus one Gris, milling a land and creating a bug token. After that, he minus two Vivian, before casting Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. Mm. Uh oh, sexy Clexy. It's possible that I may have used Adakar Waste for colored mana before, so I'm just gonna like lose two life. <laughs> if you narrate that, Phil, just say that. <laughs> I don't want this people coming moment, after me and Andy comments. decided to lose two life for no game he reasons. Thinks, <laughs> he thinks he cheated. <laughs> we aren't sure, and no one's really paying attention, so... Just play Let's a little, little tax. Excluding me. <laughs> <laughs> he was, and I quote, too woke on the vodka Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I had a second one brought to me by my nice. kind husband. Vivian gets Eternal Witness from Mud's deck. Ewit returns the Sword of Feast and Famine to his hand. Mud then casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing the War Room for a Gaia's Cradle. The Conundrum triggers and Mud returns the Command Tower to hand. He recasts the sword and equips it to Tusky. We go to combat, and Tusky deals 3 damage to Andy, making him discard a card and untapping his lands. In second main, Mud casts Natural Order, sacrificing a bug to tutor for a green creature. It's a bane of progress. In reaction to the ETB, I spin my top, and then tap it to put it on top of my deck. I should have tutored with Magda first, but now that my top is in the deck, I decide not to shuffle it away. I do, however, crack my treasures to reduce the bane of progress size. The Bane still gets 14 plus 1 plus 1 counters. After all that, Mud cast his commander, Karth the Lion. In the name of the Iron Kingdom, I, I summon, summon thee. On ETB, he gets Vraska the Unseen from the top 7. He casts Liliana, Waker of the Dead. Entering with double counters, Liliana is able to ultimate immediately, making a reanimation emblem. Andy draws for turn and casts Hour of Revelation. Good one. No. <laughs> <laughs> On cast, the bridge gets an additional counter. 
heart triggers twice, whiffing on the first and putting Liliana of the Veil to hand from the second. Heading into combat, end the attacks mod with the bridge. I drop a sacred foundry untapped, and cast Whirlwind of Thoth. I recast once again Sensei's Divining Top, drawing a card on cast. I cast Search for Glory, drawing a card before, gaining 2 life because of Snow and Tutoring for Ezcha of the Infinite. I then pass. Mud replaces the command tower. He then goes to combat, reanimating Vorinclex with the Liliana's emblem. Tusk in Vorinclex comes to me for 7. In second main, Mud casts Liliana of the Veil. He minus 2 the Planeswalker to make Endy sacrifice a creature. Nope, counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my Razor Tide bridge is gone. I deserve this. About that. I deserve this. Thank you. I agree. Mud cast Vraska the Unseen. He minus 3 to destroy my enchantment and pass. Endy land drops Crawling Barons. If you die in the game, you die in real life. Oh my god. Uh oh. No one ever told me that. <laughs> um. I have so many apologies. Uh, letters, Fitz, right? no. Oh, yeah, no. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> At the end step, I spin the top. I land drop an island and cast Jessica's Will to generate 5 mana. I cast Elsha of the Infinite. And considering the Vadra play is not that great, I decide to draw cards by putting the top on top and cast it with Elsha's ability. I do this 5 times and pass. Mud minus 2 Liliana again, making me sacrifice a creature. He then ultimates Vraska, getting 3 assassins with super dead touch. After that, he recasts Karth, getting Vraska, Golgari Queen to hand. He casts the Planeswalker, and I react with a counter spell. At the beginning of combat, Liliana's emblem brings back Eternal Witness, bringing back Vraska, Golgari Queen to hand. Vorinclex, Tusky, and Ewit attack Endy, who blocks by activating the Crawling Barons. Mud then pass. Endy casts Anticipate. He land drops an island and pass. Allen drop Glacial Fortress and cast Austere Command, picking both creatures mode. In reaction, Mud casts Heroic Intervention. Running out of time and options, I cast Wheel of Misfortune. So I guess Endy can't pick higher than. I can't pick higher than one. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> if you both so pick two, I have the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> I I I Got have one. my number. It's on a die. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's reveal. Three, it, it, two, one. Uh, uh, uh. It's a it's a one. Damn pick zero. Yeah. Oh, so you do wheel and oh, you I don't take damage. Oh my goodness. I take two. <laughs> Cast. Oh. Uh, Underworld Breach. Nice, yeah, you got it. And pass. Okay. <laughs> At the end of your turn, I am oh, going oh. to I'm going to clock spinning. I'm gonna put one additional counter on Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, because of Vorinclex, <laughs> that makes it two. It does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Swing with all the with all the brass good things. I guess split evenly. Big uh -huh. dead. Dead. <laughs> nice. <Big game. laughs> he got there. Nice. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you to our patrons for supporting us directly. If you'd like to join them, the link will be in the description. Check out everyone on Twitter. Take care and we'll see you very soon.